Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here in TNO at the start of a new campaign in which we are playing with President Lyndon B. Johnson. Inauguration Day. Lyndon Johnson, the trustworthy new face of the Republican Party, took the oath in this morning at the Capitol and was formally inaugurated as President of the U.S. to thunderous applause from the thousands gathered on the Mall. Stepping to the podium, President Johnson faced the TV cameras and spoke to the nation, my fellow countrymen. The oath I've taken before God is not mine alone, but ours together. We are one nation and one people. Our future as a people rest not on individuals, but on all citizens working together for a greater cause. Our nation's journey towards a great society shall continue on, always trying and always gaining in the cause to build a greater America for those who will come after us, so they will not have to suffer the same injustices that plague so many Americans today. In a land of bountiful wealth, people go hungry. In a land of peerless scholars, children are unable to read and write. In a land of healing miracles, our neighbors suffer and die. This should not be so. Before this generation of Americans is finished, our enemies of poverty, injustice, equality will not just retreat, but be conquered. When any citizen denies his fellow saying, his color is not mine, in that moment he betrays America. The great society insists upon the liberty of all Americans to pursue happiness, no matter their color. Each of us must find a way to advance the purpose of the great society, and it is in this cause that our course is abundantly clear. The president stepped down from the podium, smiling and waving to the cheering masses as he made his way to the statutory hall to enjoy the traditional congressional luncheon. There will be enough time for a widespread national change after he'd eaten. Hail to the chief, the great society, bombs, bullets, BS, what's not to love? And with the Johnson presidency, my friends, after more than a year of hard campaigning, from the primaries to the general election, President LBJ sits in the Oval Office campaigning under bold claims of a great society. He plans to shape America by any means necessary. These planned reforms represent the continuation of Kennedy's torture progressivism and will truly change the fabric of the nation with sweeping civil rights legislation, Medicare for all, and ending the poverty-stricken state of so much of the country. In addition, Johnson also claims he will improve the military, reforming it into a fighting machine fit for the modern world. However, before he can begin his planned cascade of reforms to change the fabric of American society, he must gain the nation's trust first. In his inaugural address, Johnson will bring the entire country up to speed on his plans and their future. Very cool. But we must go with the mistakes of Nixon. President Nixon's administration was, for a lack of a better term, disastrous. During his term, the South African War began, civil rights came to a head, and the U.S. suffered the worst presidential scandal in its short history. After his resignation, and still during his term, his successor, John F. Kennedy, was assassinated. If Johnson is to gain the trust of the people back towards not only himself, but the R.D. party as a whole, he must assure the people that these issues will be solved, assurances that the war in South Africa will be won, and that full equality of the race is achieved, no matter the scandal or corruption which may or may not occur, or what has occurred. The inauguration speech, my fellow countrymen, on this occasion, the oath that I've taken before you is not one I take alone, but one that we take together. We are one nation, and one people. We may have different colors or speak different tongues, but the banner which we follow remains the same. We are all Americans, and as such, we must work together for the further betterment of the country. Work together for the creation of a great society. For the past few decades, life in America has been greatly diminished. The recessions in the 30s and 50s, the loss of the World War, the Akagi Accords, and so on. Our nation has faced hardship for so long and suffered so much, it is easy to forget what we once were, and what we could be. America as a whole is strong, but her people do not reflect such. In a land of great wealth, families must not live in hopeless poverty. In a land rich in harvest, children must not go hungry. In a land of healing miracles, neighbors must not suffer and die untended. In a great land of learning and progress, young people must be taught to read and write. In a great society... The people have equal opportunity, the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. At present, America does not reflect the ideal of a great society. Politicians in Washington vote on party lines rather than by beliefs or principles. The minorities of our nation still toil under great discrimination, and more than a quarter of the country lives in poverty. I say to you now, America, this cannot stand. I have served this nation for more than 30 years of my life. I have struggled against the waste of our potential, our freedom, and our great wealth, but I cannot do it alone. I will repeat today what I said on that sorrowful day in November last year. I will lead, and I will do the best I can. But you, America, must also look within your own hearts to the old promises and to the old dreams of for guidance. The ideals of the old America will become the creed of a new one. God bless you all, and God bless this great nation. Strong words from a strong leader. Jumbo. But, let's see. For the German Civil War, unfortunately, Goring won. He was actually nominated as a successor, but Goring did win. And actually kind of cool, we had Central Siberia has actually already formed you know, before everyone else, and it's actually Alexander Velesivsky who has won. Um... So, yeah, cool. And here is the South African War. So, for the South African War, normally it's tried and true. You use two air cavalry combat, you know, divisions. But this time, I decided, let's try one. How far can we go with just one? I wanted a little bit more of a challenge. So, 
South Africa is looking really, really bad, as well as the rest of Africa. But then there's Africa, you know, whatever. And actually, if you look over here, Madagascar exploded. But we have a uneasy, peaceful, three-way uh, Madagascar. So we have the Jews in the north. We have our puppet in the south, you know, southeast. And the Germans still in the southwest. So, yeah, that's very weird. Very, very weird. But in the meantime, let's go to Tefestung Rosberg. Kasama, Kaputa, and hopefully we can capitulate these guys, because technically I've already capitulated the Boer State, which is still probably relatively strong, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can do well here. So, I'll just let them go on, they'll probably do fine. A ceasefire, uh, no, we're good. I want to see how far we can go on, so if you want to rebuild those, please go right ahead, so we're going to try to continue fighting on. Hopefully we don't encounter too many divisions, because we've killed off a lot of divisions. Actually, I, I, I sent one, only one. Uh, helicopter division. I actually got it destroyed by accident. <laughs> so this is another division I sent over. So, yeah, using just one division here is not great. It is what it is, though. All right, let's see. Strength and pro-American sentiment. Uh, let's do that and let's diminish the far right image of the NPP. Best of luck to them. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And the mistakes of Nixon, we shall follow up with the legacy of Kennedy. The Kennedy presidency, though tragically cut short, represented possibly the best RDs could be. His few, short, optimistic months were possibly the most important in determining the future of not just the RDs, but America as a whole. Just as we admonish the mistakes of Nixon, if the Republicans and Democrats are to survive in the current state, we must also continue the legacy of Kennedy. President Johnson will carry Kennedy's sword to progressivism and unity into America's whole. Once more, we'll get a hundred more political power. As you see, we have, do have quite a bit of political power right now, which is pretty darn nice, I'd say. Oh, we got some Germans showing up, or some German Africans, which is not very good for us. But hopefully we do okay, okay, and as you can see, South Africa has decided to come up here too. The return of Blomfontein. Oh, that's not good. That is not, quite not good. But man, trying to capitulate these guys with just one division really kind of sucks. <clears throat> Operational success, very good. Very, very nice. Uh, eh. A strength of pro-American sentiment. And by doing this, you actually get some political power, so. Pretty nice. 39... XP, keep going, keep going, guys. Legacy of Kennedy. Boards together. It's time we move forward together. The pains of the past decades with the humiliation and distrust that our citizens have with the government must come to an end. This country needs to take better care of its citizens, and in order to do that, we must endeavor to bring forth a program to help all Americans and further unite our country into a greater society. A greater society that helps Americans of all classes, colors, and convictions. So they do not suffer because of conditions that are not always in the control. Onwards. Onwards, onwards, onwards. Wow, this is taking them forever to move. Wow, why are you taking so long? River, infrastructure, enemy bases and such? Yeah, that's not good. That's really not good. Come on, guys. You gotta go faster than that. There you go. That's what we like to see. Speed, speed, speed. Take. Well, yep. Operational success is very nice. Very good. Naval helicopters. Very good. Very good. Oh, we got a lot of stuff done. Nice. Cool. That's fine. Doesn't really matter to us too much. 62. Pick some research. Uh, hollow coins, because we can. And, uh, we got three more th things here. Nice. It is 65, so happy 65, everyone. We're going to start with Nixon this time, just because, well, I've done, I started with Nixon twice already, and I'm kind of done starting with ISM. So, about four words together. Let's lay the groundwork. Policy analysts, researchers, economists, and public administrators who have had their experience in running domestic programs will be needed in order to prepare the greatest reform in American history. We must gather all of them to start hammering out the policy alongside the various political committees working in Congress. Let us make sure that we have a bill worth fighting for. Which is good. Civilian budget boosts. It's good. There you go. Not bad. Oh, military austerity. Eh, eh, kind of down. Doesn't really matter too much anyways. But that's okay. Come on. Keep going. Keep going. We got it down there. Nice. Hope we got some more supplies. Keep going, keep going, get to Dar es Salaam. Oh, there's actually someone there. Gosh darn it. Are they moving out anywhere? Oh, they kind of are. Uh, you guys hold. Just wait until they leave, so. Hang out, hang get some more organization, too. They'll leave, hopefully, soon enough. And operational success, nice. Oh, Honduras. They like us a little bit more. That's kind of nice. The Great Society. President LBJ sat in the Oval Office opposite of Vice President Edmund Muskie and Senator Nelson Rockefeller. So began President Johnson sitting at the Resolute Desk, the Great Society. We've tested the waters, we've got the votes, what exactly are we going to push forward? Edmund Muskie scratched his chin, eyeing Johnson warily. I thought we'd figure that out a long time ago. Things have changed, Jed, Johnson replied. We've made compromise to get the support we have. Now, what are the major things that we could get, us, get, get away with? I won't give up the civil rights push, Kennedy died for it, and I won't let his death be in vain. More than just voting security as well, I want the whole racist institutionalized disease ripped out, root and stem. 
Fair enough, said Rockefeller. I could probably get that through without much issue. I think we should throw in some anti-poverty legislation, too. We're still in a recession, Johnson. I'm not sure what the bills would precisely entail, but we should probably include them. Fair enough, Ed. You said something at one point about some environmental protections, right? Right? Muskie nodded. All right, then, said Johnson. A triad of civil rights, social programs, and environmental protections. A groundwork for great society, eh, gentlemen? Very cool. And, also, I do want to show you that uh, we are a liberal democracy as Republicans, and we have 49 senators already, so we're doing pretty darn well with 24 far-right uh, senators as well. Introduce the concept. Next, we must start introducing the idea of our Great Society Bill to the public. We must explain to them that our ideal goal is in reforming our country to make it more fair for all Americans. We must show them that we ideally want to make every American wealthier, happier, and more freer in their lives. Our introduction will start in major universities, then major cities, then massive venues to make people excited for a Great Society Bill. The people must feel excited in order, in order for public support to rise. Very good. Come on, guys. Can You, you guys are so slow. I love the attrition that you're taking, bud. Come on. There you go. Take him. Take it. Go, go, go. Nice. All right, so maybe we're gonna circle that division and kill it off. Come on, no, they're not dead yet. Cool. Let them die. Let them die. Hopefully, Coolamain is still uh, encircled and captured. Cool. Just hold for now because I'm sending you back down here. Uh, just take all these smaller states first. All the victory points must be ours. Go, go, go. I don't see any divisions here, which is pretty nice. And then again, we cut off a lot of them, but speeches across the nation. After months of wrangling behind closed doors and spirited uh, speculation from the press, President Johnson today finally unveiled his Great Society program in full detail to the American public. In a speech given during a guest appearance at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, Johnson laid out the ways his project would tackle poverty, racial injustice, education, health care, and transportation, amongst other aspects of American society in need of reform. Vowing to overhaul the country inner cities, inner countryside, and inner classrooms, the president expressed his firm belief that the Great Society is exactly where a country needs to be in these tying time, trying times. His speech drew applause from those in attendance and from many within the Republican Democrats. However, his plans are not without opposition. With the war in South Africa still raging on, many question whether America can afford the president's proposed programs on top of the money vanishing into that quagmire. In addition, some voices within the far-right MPP and the Democrats murmured that, that many of Johnson's initiatives would be a gross overreach of governmental authority, and with at least one far-right senator reportedly denouncing him as a power-hungry proto-fascist. For the next few months, President Johnson tends to pass a myriad of bills aiming at implementing his vision. This will be a long, arduous process, and it will certainly be necessary to cut more deals to secure the support necessary to pass these bills. Regardless, he believes that no task is too much if it re shall render American society truly great. For a better America. Followed up with form task forces. Oh, we get more political power. Nice. Then we must study the entirety of American society in detail. We need to look at through every single aspect, from education, poverty, infrastructure, healthcare, welfare, arts, and so forth. We must also compare these aspects and pair our plans with the current budget to adjust accordingly. Once our studies are all over, all of the data we accrued can be used to complete the final formulation and to perfect the great society bill. Battle of Barcelona, very, very good. Uh, oh, yeah, we'll do some of the stuff here, too. Very, 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 very nice. South Africa, can we do anything for you? Uh, North America, we want Africa right now. No, not really. So, I don't really want to hurt the center, so we can do that one. Let's see, anything else here? State by Siberia, I don't really feel like doing that state room. England has its civil war ended. Eh, we'll do that one, why not? Get Songya. For the good of the party. And actually, since we're up here, go up there too. Are there any more? Where are the VPs? They don't have a lot of divisions left, do they? Nice. The Oval Office was illuminated by a dim orange glow as the sun set in the distance. Inside, presidential aide Walter Jenkins entered with a large handful of documents and folders for the president to see. Len, uh, president Lyndon Bain Johnson sits in his chair reading and signing other important documents. How did your meeting with Senator Bennett go, Mr. President? asked Jenkins. About as well as it can be, can be expected, replied an exhaustive President Johnson. As long as they don't try to completely overhaul the American political system and disturb the status quo too much, the Democrats will ride along and vote with us. Jenkins sat up in his seat, the orange glow on the setting sun warming his skin. But, President, Mr. President, isn't that what you intend to do? Was that not your entire campaign platform, to reform the American political system and to create, cause a great society, or create a great society? In due time, Walt, replied Johnson, signing another document and setting it aside. So you're going to break your deal with the Democrats later on? Maybe, he said. Or maybe they'll fall in line and vote with us anyway. Maybe I'll get enough votes to ignore them and go ahead with my plans. All due respect, sir, but I don't think that the Democrats will just let that let you do that. They'll cause a big fuss. Have you ever tried to call on a panicking horse, or more importantly, a mule? You need to approach, a, approach slowly, and only go around the back when you're sure it trusts you. Politics is much the same, for right now we've stolen the approach. That might work, but what if it doesn't? One thing at a time, Johnson replied, for the moment, they'll have a, to hug our elephant, and we'll have to kiss their booty. And so it goes. Oh boy. Hopefully, we can just get all the VPs. Like, this is taking a long time to take out 
Ost Africa. Yeah, that's good. Viaka. Darn it. Yeah, what are their divisions? I guess South Africa actually killed a few of them. Nice. Secure congressional support. In order for a great society program to pass, we need Congress. We must secure votes in the House and the Senate in order to get this massive bill to uh, the President's desk. Let's formulate a strategy in order to secure those votes. We can possibly use a bully pulpit in our own party to bring our more indecisive allies to vote, or we can make deals with some of the more moderate members of the MPP to get this bill passed. Either way, let's secure the needed backing to achieve success. Backroom meetings. Yellow glowing lamps hanging from its low ceiling besides the weak lighting. The room was extravagantly decorated. Velvet lined chairs sat around a magnificently calm oaken table, and the walls were covered with matching wooden panels. Lovely room, said LBJ, entering through the door opposite of Jackson. Sorry about the lighting, Jackson replied. This is this has always been a bit of an ignored room. I asked for one to meet him, didn't I? I suppose, in any case, we've got to ha have to make this brief, Johnson. I believe I have a lot of things to do. Sp spend long here enough, and people will start to notice, too. What do you need? The president sat down at the beautiful table across from Jackson. I'm going to need your help, he began. The Democrats won't be complacent with my reforms forever, and when they turn, I'll need center MPP votes. What's in it for us? Why should I help you sway the center? Why shouldn't you, is a better question. By supporting my reforms, you'll get everything you've been begging for and more. And what exactly have we been begging for? Civil rights, universal health care, greater social security, about a hundred other things. Jackson pointed for a moment. If I'm going to help you, you have you have to help me. Any bill the Senate calls for, I want your support. All right. I can't promise Republicans will follow suit, but I'll throw you a bone when you want one. Excellent, replied Jackson, smiling. I think we're going to get a lot of things done together, Mr. President. Now the true reforms can begin. Oh, we lost some PP. Uh, no. We're gonna, I'm going to keep trying to do this one. The fall of Windhook. Oh, that sucks. Oh, no, that's actually really good. That's actually really good. Nice. Actually, I have to come out earlier, but... Oh, if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. We can still work with the leftist England. That's fine. It is what it is. Um, let's see if we can go in. Lusanka. Uh, Leuvenstein. Nice, let's go in. That should be the last one we need, right? Lupin, maybe? The fall of East London. Oh, oh. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's really not good. Wow. How is Ost Africa not capitulated yet? Seriously, what the heck? I've already capitulated these guys down here, too. God dang it. Ah, we gotta head down to here, too. No, we're gonna keep going on. We're gonna keep going on. I don't care what happens. Junction in the road. The Oval Office sat quiet and serene, opposed its usual state of interruption after an interruption. President Johnson, as was typical, sat at his desk, greeting, signing, and doing the duties of a president. However, there was an interruption. Two men forced away to hold the proposal. Johnson finished signing his pa last paper and looked up to Walter Jenkins and Edmund Muskie. Well, Johnson started. You've been sitting here for a good couple minutes. What do you need? Walter Jenkins shuffled, shuffled in his seat. We've got to make a choice, Mr. President, he said. If we want to pass some of our reforms, we can make friends with the Democrats, or we can impress the far right. No one else has the votes to secure maturity with us. The Senate are notoriously unreliable, as I'm sure you're aware. We're already making friends with the Democrats, aren't we? Asked Johnson. Yes, Muskie began, but they're proving pretty stubborn. If we want their support, we'll have to make a genuine concessions to them. All right, what do you exactly mean by oppress the far right? Intimidation, blackmail, that sort of thing. Hmm, said Johnson, scratching his chin. What do you think, Muskie? Personally, I don't think the far right will cave as easily as we think. Democrats are the way to go. We'll make the call. Intimidate them. We'll play nice with the Democrats for now. Uh, I think that'd be the better way forward. On our own, we look a little better. We go a little more unified. A deal with the center. Well, we got more Democrats that are available. We'll probably get... They're 21, I think. So, odds are getting four of them is better than getting trying to get 100% of the four center is probably better. So, we have a majority in Congress. Let's use it. The party needs to be whipped up. We can promise some of our more moderate members to support this bill as long as we get some more compromised pork billing in place. It'll more likely lose us some victories in the South, or some votes in the South, if we get the Great Society Bill to pass, but that's all what it will take if it means true reform. The good news as well is that the MPP will not be able to stop this bill as long as their party remains united in the face of obstruction. The downside is the MPP can pick up more conservative members of our electorate after we secure our congressional majority to pass this bill. Cool. So this really sucks. Like, I've already capitulated these guys once, but... Oh. Anything bad happening? Hopefully not. Democracy returns to Italy. Okay, so seriously, how is... How are these guys not dead? I've already capitulated them, I thought, but... Blumfontein, I guess? If we have to help them down here, wow. You're looking really weak. Well, that's good for us, but still. No, no, get down here, get down here. God dang it. Yeah, using just one division is not great. And if we lose, well... Actually, just go ahead and beat them up if you can. I'm just going to make sure that, uh... That we went off screen. Because... It's... Whatever. It's just whatever. Well, Blumfontein, good. A disaster in South Africa. So, off screen, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that things are a little bit better. But if you like to read about this, please go right ahead. All right, everyone. So, as you can see on screen, Africa's now blue. And I'll be honest here, don't try what I did. Using only one air cavalry division. Really incredibly bad idea. Um, it's just... 
Central, all the, it was actually Central Africa giving us the most problems, but you have to literally take every single VP, which I think is a mistake. That's pretty, that's a pretty big mistake for every single VP you need, but Triumph of South Africa. I think I've actually read this before, so if you like to read about this one, please go right ahead. So that was pretty good. Um, I'm just, I'm going to make sure that we don't screw up too badly in any campaign. So, conversations from the street, though. Indonesia calls. If you like to read about this one as well, because Indonesia is now a flame as well. If you like to read about it, please go right ahead. We'll always stand up to tyranny. How many more will we send to die? Always stand up to tyranny. Even though it just happened. But I did a few more focuses off screen just because, well, we kind of needed to. But for the good of America. We've corralled everyone we can we can to work with us. Republicans, Democrats, and even the opposition and the MPP. If we're all working for the betterment of America, then we should all be on board with finer education, reducing poverty, improving health care, and ensuring freedom in our land. We've made our case to the Congress. Now they need to get with a program for the good of America, in which have done the great society. My fellow Americans, as your president... I want to announce the beginning of a new era. The past 30 years since our fall from greatness has been marked by continued disappointment, and with the past weakness that is the U.S. has shown to our people and the world. Americans in those past years have become more poor, sick, hungry, angry, and resentful, and in embarrassment over the government's continued failures to keep the American people prosperous. Even with the threats from the swastika, it has been no excuse for the past neglect that administrations before us had shown. But despite our struggles in the past, today is a different day. Different day. Today marks a day in the American society. A day in which more Americans can get out of the miseries of poverty and are able to join the workforce to better secure freedom and liberty. A day in which the worries of the sick and suffering can be soothed by medical coverage that is given for the future health and merriment. A day in which all people within this country can pursue happiness overall. The American people can prosper forever forever more with the signing of this Great Society Bill. Our Great Society program will enhance the lives of every single American and make sure their needs are taken care of, which was pretty good, because we got that done. But those were on poverty. Poverty has been an immense drag in our society, and has plagued the U.S. since the dawn of the Industrial Revolution, both in our cities and our most most rural communities. Millions live in a state of squalor. A lack of economic opportunity subjects generations of Americans to an endless cycle of hardship. No more. Now, the U.S. is in a state of war against an older enemy older and more elusive than any nation. Poverty itself. Through new programs and initiatives, we will stamp out poverty so that all can succeed thanks to the government's helping hand. And we get a third bear safety net. So, cool. And now we must choose another one. Expensive rights. Prevention is the best cure. GDP growth will improve. I kind of like that. Uh, let's do well for other people. Despite illusions of economic success compared to our enemies up to both the West and the East, the country is suffering from numerous crises that continue to strike those in the lowest strata of the population. Homelessness, poverty, and an inability to obtain even the most basic services are now endemic to the country. And through a regime or a regimen of new programs, President Johnson plans to address the domestic issues facing the nation. For centuries, the federal government has taken a backseat in helping the poor, whether due to constitutional restraints or other impediments. Now the federal government's role must be re-examined so that one thing can become clear. The phrase, promote the general welfare, is a mandate, not an ideal. Cool. And even though we just won, let's go ahead and grab some research as well. Of course, we did hollow coins off screen already. I kind of ignored all this stuff just because this was taking forever. But yeah, seriously, every single VP you need for this part of Africa, I think that's a bit extreme. But, African Nightmare is done. Pull out of Africa, we're going to immediately pull out of it, because I don't really care about Africa. And, uh, we have this as well. Very good, because I had a really little game save, I believe. And, the Great Society. Impact on civil rights very weak. So, the great nation of the U.S. cannot continue on its present course. Not as it is now, despite our defeat in the Second World War, America is still one of the wealthiest nations on Earth. Perhaps even the wealthiest. Our citizens need not to go hungry, tired, or sick, yet they do. In every state, city, every town. Citizens, Americans, feel the grip of persuasive depression, spirits beaten as freshly as their bodies. But we can fix this. The new deal that was that was, never was can still be realized. We only need to make it happen. Victory? Tribe in Africa. Must keep the mandates as three separate entities. Doesn't really matter. So... Uh, even though I literally just got rid of them, so. Improve civil rights in the country? The RDs grow further divided. Eh, we'll see. Eh, we'll do it anyways, why not? So we have a lot of PP, but we need more. Impact on civil rights, very weak. The Democrats grow pro more prominent in the South. So we talk Republicans in the North. Additional high school funding. Improve the s school system? Why not? That seems pretty good. Improve the school system in the country again for soldiers. Reduce the MPP support for among the enlisted. Research facility goes up. Increase support in our states along the southern schools. Expand social security eligibility. Reduce our support amongst voters in conservative areas. Poverty gets rapidly better. Nice. Um, poverty, we have new expenses costing 1% of our current GDP. Why not? And then get more stability. I want to reflect. Stability wouldn't be bad. We already have 100% though. Poverty will improve. Our support in the southern states as well as those in the Rockies will increase. Nice. Very nice. Help the environment in the country. Oh, uh, sure. Why not? We like the environment. Sideline anti nuclear activists. Help the environment. Image increase will among the progressive, but decrease among conservatives. Sanction ocean dumping. Worsen our image in the coastal states. Improve others. 
Help the environment of the country, Alaska, and certain states, so we'll improve of it. New national parks. I like that. Uh, environmental movement. I oh, appreciate that. That's not bad. Combat water pollution. Uh, cool. You know what? I kind of want national parks. You might be able to make money from that, so. Alright, let's see. We definitely want to do these, especially before, like, election season, so. School system. Improved research facilities. Academic base. I'm not even going to question that right now, so. Cool. It's weak on education, but the establishment of African mandates. If you like me about this, please go ahead. I guess we can play some if we really wanted to, but duty calls from DC. McIntyre makes a state visit to Washington. If you like to read about that, please go right ahead. I've read this one before, so I've actually played as McIntyre before as well, and I used to call him McIntyre. Mandate expired. If you want to read about that, there you go. Well, now for Africa, they're all going to collapse, which is fine with us. We fought nice and hard and long for it, but oh well. It's only Africa. What's the worst that could happen? Pop up attacks? Nice, nice, nice. We do need to get involved in Indonesia next, so. Yeah, that was actually I struggled quite a bit off screen with the uh, African states, so it kind of sucked. Uh, that's a little bit ahead of time. Anything else here? Yes, industry. More max factories in the state because actually we've lost or we have a lot of extra cities we can use right now. Uh, thank you, thank you. Anything else here? Yes, New York. Not down there. We've already built up all the infrastructure in the nation, so it's truly a great society. Uh, zero, 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 one. And how about up here? Nope, nothing up there. That sucks. Salazar wants colonies to return. If you like to read about that, please, please, please go right ahead. I'm not really sure what else to build right now. So until we get more factories, max, fa max factories in a state, lots of this stuff, I guess. You know, and actually, can we, can we build? Oh yeah, build a nuclear uh, reactor. Pennsylvania will love that. Nope. The OFN gives Angola its independence. May the peace last. Well, let's see how long it stays. East Africa, its independence. And Central Africa. Cool. Our divisions are back. The boys are coming home. If you like to read about that, please go right on ahead. Somewhere beyond the sea. Cool. Since some arms, Hotel had to manage on his own. Oh, we're going to get involved as well. Good old Yanks. Congolese Republic. Not bad. We're still very weak. Political landscape. Uh, we are working well together, as well as the Amer National Progressive Party. Nice. A moment to reflect. Uh, I want to do more poverty stuff, really. That's what I really want to do. Uh, we can probably grow more unified. That's fine with me. Let's do that one. Uh, can we send any volunteers to these guys? Indonesia? Free Indonesia? Oh, we can. Nice. I want to send more than one, because last time I did send only one, it didn't go very well. Even though we did some planes as well, but let's see. How many planes can we send them this time? I care. Well, I guess none. Oh, 50,000? Wait, what? Uh... Did I not? Pretty sure I did click on that, but whatever. Okay, 160 is not a ton. Uh, let's see. Where were those other planes? Are oh, they down here? No, those carrier planes. I guess that's down there. Oh, uh, just in the fighters for now. Oh, maybe they're down there. That's fine. Uh, no, those. Okay, seriously, where, where did the planes go? Guantanamo Bay. We'll get rid of that one. I don't want time to go on just yet, just because we do need to manage them, so... Ah, there you are. No? No? No, you're not. God dang it. Where are they? Oh, you're in Madagascar. Why are you in Madagascar, guys? Go home. Go home, guys. Go home. Hold, and go to Oklahoma or something. Actually, that's not bad. This much cast. With 50. There you go. You guys actually go here, though. Help them out. Welfare of the people. Cool. And uh, I guess we do 1964 military policy outlook. We could do that. I guess the burning jungle. And it needs you the flame. What is the situation? I definitely want to help them out this time. Definitely, definitely. definitely. Hollow coins are done like earlier. The death of the Supreme Court justice. It is what it is. Cool. All right. Anything else we can do here? Aid for Indonesians. Yes. Yes, please. Help them out. Help them out. Help them out. Very good. Very good. Yeah, we should have some planes here. Yep, we're doing a good job. And then use your flame. If you like to do about that, please go right on ahead. Now, nah, let's get some air XP as well. Very, very good. The jungle burns. As it should. Alright, and we get more political power. If you want uh if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. I'm pretty sure I've already read these before. So it is what it is. So if you like to read about that, please go right ahead. Just because I want to read like unique things I have not read before for the most part, so. 
nomination of Thurgood Marshall. Okay, in a press conference that has dominated headlines across the country today, President LBJ has announced that Thurgood Marshall, currently a judge in the U.S. Court of Appeals for Second Circuit, will be nominated to a newly vacant seat on the Supreme Court. Marshall, a graduate of Howard Law School and an experienced civil rights lit 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 litigator, will be the first African-American to serve in the highest court of the land. This appointment would surely mark a turning point in American history, however. Some in Congress are not so willing to see such a point return in the first place. Many dissenters come from the South and are directly relying on white voter blocks who aren't well disposed towards putting a black man on the Supreme Court. Several members of the Senate have already put out statements to the press expressing their firm opposition, although nobody has come out and said it wouldn't be due to Marshall's race. Instead, the release has mentioned the dangers of liberal judicial activism and other such phrases. Clearly, the appointment of Thurgood Marshall will be a political fight for the ages. The right thing, the right time, the right man, the right place, I hope. Cool. Uh, the vote will be held in 15 days. Do we have to do anything for that? 40, only 44 out of 49 Republicans. Uh, six of the Democrats say okay, the Senate is okay, and we're okay. So that's already 50, 59. Nice. 59 is pretty good with us. Alright, let's see what we can do. I probably want to come down here, actually. Yep. Probably want to come over here and start circling, killing them all off. Please don't leave, guys. Please don't, please don't attack me if you don't have to. Yeah, we're looking pretty bad. What are we missing here? Is it just planes? Transport. Transport. We are, we're making transport helicopters. Uh, yeah, this is glitched or something. It, transport helicopters? Gunships are cool and all, but. Yeah, we have those. Maybe we don't need improved ones. Oh, let's, let's go back to this one. Um. Pre-war transports, transports, and early interceptors, early helicopters, improved jet stuff, basic spy planes, improved experimental helicopters. Well, I guess. Well, there's the jet ones. So, we can try experimental and or. Let's go back to it. There's that one. Now that's, that's literally it. That's literally it. We have experimental, we've got improved transports. I'm literally not seeing anything else here. I don't know why early helicopters, maybe? It's a transport, but it's still not that great. They're literally outdated as well, so... It's kind of dumb that we can't get any more supplies for these guys or something. Uh, Saturday mornings with Tom and Jerry, if you like to about that, please go right ahead. Yeah, we're literally not making any. That doesn't make any sense. Tank's looking pretty bad. That's okay. Go lower it by two, then. We got the scouts coming along. Yeah, this is not making. How is this not making? That must be a glitch in the game or something. We're literally not making a single division here. So, born in the USA, if you like to hear about that, please go right ahead as well. Operational success is good. Nice. Let's see if we can help out these guys anymore. We can close that out because we don't really need it. Cripple Indonesian. Uh, if the Indonesian forces would be good. Nice. Yeah, this is that's actually glitched. Because we literally can't do anything about it. We're not getting any more supplies. So... Yeah, that is really, really not good. Back, work, back channels? Eh, kind of words. I, we could get more political power, but I don't keep working on poverty and stuff. Let's see, assist current programs. A little more prominent. Robust safety net. Improve the sa social safety network. That's not bad. Prevention is the best cure. Let's do that one. And here is where people are deprived of the tools they need to succeed in today's economy. Poverty takes root. For that reason, we must nip it in the bud before it can even be given the chance to bloom. Through establishment of higher education standards and grants where they are needed most, we can ensure that America's youth are educated enough to take on high-level jobs in an ever-changing economy. Yeah, this is dumb. This is really dumb. That we literally aren't making any helicopters. Transport planes? Transport helicopters? Oh, he's confirmed. A man that once declared you do what you think is right and let the law catch up will now sit on the most important judicial institution in the U.S. And it is as to vote in the Senate today, Thurgood Marshall was confirmed as the newest Associate Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, Justice Marshall will be the first African American to serve on the court, and his confirmation is undoubtedly a victory for the civil rights movement, which he uh, himself has worked tirelessly to advance. During his confirmation hearing, a number of conservative senators railed against judicial activism and made, made a variety of statements that many commenters have called a little better than dog whistles. Some even asked whether or not Marshall has had ties to American Bolsheviks. This strategy failed, however. The press conference today, Justice Marshall stated his gratitude to the Senate and to the people of America before posting for pictures with his two sons and his wife, the civil rights activist Cecilia Suyat Marshall. This is truly a historic moment for the nation, respecting the triumph of justice over institutional racism. 
Let's hope so. We get prep event. All right, and yeah, this is very weird. Helicopters. Oh, and we have this. You know, scouts, attack helis, anti subs. So, and I know that the thing is over here as well. Air assault. I mean, we we got the division, but we can't make any, which I don't understand. But whatever. Good artillery up, and get more efficiency gain. So now we're lacking how much? Two hundred ninety-nine. Can we get 280, 298, please, maybe? That'd be kind of nice, but it's not being made. It's literally not even being made. Bandit training cast extend, look at that. The con rises. Early. Yeah, look at that. 0.5 a week. Well, sending these guys was a mistake then. Well, it's a good thing we probably have Marines still. Actually, how strong are these Marines? 12 combat width. I'd rather send armor, even though it's probably really not great to send. You guys are 16 combat width. Sending these guys into the jungle is probably a big old mistake, but whatever. Come on, give me that. Led by... Uh, Bone Steel the third. There you go. There you go. So even if we try to attack, it's not going to do anything, so... That really sucks. And Russia's still killing itself. Or Kuzka's... You're going to find the Far East? Look at that. Look at that. Prevention is the best cure, my friends. I kind of want to do more civil rights as well. Wales unifies with England. Very good. Create the Office of Economic Opportunity. I think I want to do Civil Rights at the same time. We could probably do this stuff in the next time around as well, so... And by next time, I mean the next... Uh, thing I'm above. Election. Let's go in, the, go in the same place. It doesn't really matter. Nice. Prevention is the best gear, my friends. We can pilot programs. Eh, I think we get more political power. Expenses will rise a little bit. Let's go expensive civil rights first. Now it's time to turn our attention to our fellow Americans who have long been suffering under oppression. The hateful groups that cause this misery for them would align with their enemy if our country was ever invaded and occupied by them. Thus, we must be vigilant and ready for to fight for our black population. African Americans must be free in all aspects in order to combat extremism, and we will make sure that our Afro American population is free in all ways possible. Alright, so you guys are already here. You should be able to take these guys out with air superiority, so. Should. There you go, that's nice. Um, front line, send more military advisors. No, we're okay for now. Starlight, study tactics. Meh, that's okay. I don't want to lower domestic support for this at all, really, so. There you go. Aid, free nation, strike the infrastructure. No, that infrastructure can actually hurt us if we don't support it enough. Domestic support is very high. RD support is middling, even though the National Progressive Party really likes it. Death of Ho Chi Minh, goodbye, goodbye. I need you guys to go over here. So we're going to circle these guys up here and kill them off. Offers from Rome. And if you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. Get me the ambassador. Nice. Head on up, head on up. I will use these guys until they're all dead. Nice. There you go. Oh, there goes their neck up. And you guys get back to where you need to go. Cool, and there you go. That's for efficiency. What else we have down here? Nothing, anything more interesting? Not really. News from Tokyo. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. All right. Civilian budget boost. Let's keep boosting it for more PP. Ten billion is not bueno, but that's okay. Actually, we're not going to cut down the military spending just yet because we need it. More expertise is good, and bigger research. Yes, major compass. Aid them, aid them, aid them, so their manners nice and strong still. Very good. I guess head on in, I suppose. These guys are taking very long to get in here. Which sucks. Whatever. Can you guys actually win there? Yeah, you probably can. Good, go over there and then cut them all off. Nice. Tokyo Siren, where's the ambassador? Oh boy. Well, we don't have anything regarding the Japanese here yet, so central CIA, front lines, the situation, political landscape. Nothing about Italy, which sucks, but whatever. There 
There those guys go. Expand civil rights. Nice. A vote in hand. If we're to ensure the future success of a party in the face of extremism from the MPP, we must court and assist the Afro-American community in making sure that they are able to vote in every election. So many southern states within the Union are still doing everything they can, such as literacy tests, uh, polling tax, and even mass lynchings to prevent African Americans from exercising their right to vote. We must put an end to the crime of oppression that we as a party have allowed to fester for so long. If a party supports the black American, black Americans will be happy and loyal to the Republican Democratic Party in future elections. It's all about elections. They don't actually care about them. And we are there. Good. Good job, guys. Battle for Italy. There we go. Um, can we do that now? There we go. Nice, 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 nice. Well, issue three points. Invest in diplomats. I don't want to spend our PP for this, but it looks like we're going to have to. Operation success. Good, good, good. Wait, I just did that one. Didn't we? Yeah, we just did that one. What the heck? Anyways, let's talk about these guys. Couple Indian Indonesian oper operations. Thank you, thank you. Nice. Come on, guys. Oh, God, I wish helicopters would do better than this. I don't know. I don't understand why improved imp improved helicopters should be doing this for us, but it's literally not. Uh, there's no way I can take out two divisions right now. But if we do it like this, then maybe we can. There you go. Nice. Get in there. Come on. Keep these guys in place. Very good. Very good. Move up. Move up. Move up. Kill them all off. Nice. Doesn't matter what they're doing up here. Doesn't really matter at all. Because we can do this. And we'll snap one right here. Operational success is good. <clears throat> nice. Man, tanks are so slow compared to helicopters. My goodness. I'll take them out like that. There you go. And they're all dead, pretty much. Vote in hand. Outlong literacy tests. Literacy tests have been around since the 1890s and have made sure that Afro-Americans could not vote because of this demand from various state governments to have them reset the entire constitution and be able to read great classics that not even any poor southerner or white man is ever required to do. Even though it's important for the American population to be able to read to be more informative of who to vote for, this entire practice has only been used to disenfranchise Afro-Americans in the South and secure the continued vote of extremists who wish to ruin the American way of life. Let's write a provision for that that will ban these tests in the bill once and for all. Nice. Good. Good thing. Alright. Who? What else we got here? How's the free energy doing everywhere else? Not great. But that's okay. Uh, we could probably come over here and do this as well. Um, you guys come down here and we'll take them out that way. Seriously, how do we not get any more helicopters? It makes literally no sense. Help them out because I don't want to lose too many helicopters. We only have so many. Arsenal Democracy, if you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. Oh, uh, yeah. We're special. We're all special together. Nice. Go ahead and start killing them off. There you go. Help support the attack. One more dead Marine Indonesian Division. This is a good dead Marine Indonesian Division. Uh, let's see. Collaborate on museums and cultural heritage. Uh, we want more influence. Significantly decrease our influence. There you go. Let's do that one. There you go. Nice. Not bad. Well, I suppose we could go in there too, I suppose. It's alright if we do. Metro Compass is very, very nice. These requirements, no, we're kind of okay for now. And aid the Indonesians. Very good. Now go in there, 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 there. More enemy divisions must die. Die for our amusement, of course. Palembang would be good. Jambi, Jambi, Jambi. Awesome. Head on in, guys, if you'd like to. There you go. Head on down. Very awesome. Alright, helicopters, you can go around and do this as well, probably. Operational success. Very good. Oh, those guys deal with that. Go in there. There, there, there. Hopefully, we don't kill ourselves off doing this. Outlong literacy tests. Oh, we're getting attacked too. Look at that. All right, my friends. Let's see. Divining special provisions. The voting rights 
Act bill can possibly contain several other provisions that can make sure that various southern states are unable to pass changes to voting laws that can disenfranchise and prevent Afro-Americans from voting. Those states would require federal approval for voting law changes. This would secure more of the black vote for the RD party, however. The optics would be bad for some of the, our Democratic colleagues who represent southerners who are loyal to a party. Implementing these special provisions would most likely enrage white southerners who vote for a party and have them possibly switch to the MPP instead. It's up to us to decide if we really want to secure black votes while possibly losing our white southerner base in the south. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Keep them in place. And since they attacked us anyways, kill them all off going up here. Stealth integration is very, very nice. Alright, let's grab that one too. Nice. We're pretty much done with the air doctrine, and let's keep fo focusing on uh, more max factories in the state. Japan wins the issue. Oh, are you kidding me, man? Oh, we're probably not going to get Japan then. That sucks. Senate so class two elections. Uh, we're going to vote R and D, my friends. Let's vote R and D. It is 66, which is not good, but it is what it is. The Deep South is a toss up. Upper South, of course, is a toss up. West Coast. Let's do West Coast first, though. West Coast Reno. Environment very weak. Moment to reflect. Stability is not bad. The Democrats will grow more prominent. Let's, let's do the one we've already done for the focus and then do Sweet Talk Democrats. That'd be pretty good. Man, we are. I just don't understand. I really do, just do not understand how we're not making any helicopters. This is literally what we need. And we can't make them. Billy's votes? Sure, guys. Everyone votes for the Commonwealth to join. Or, you know. It's fine. There you go. Come on in, guys. It's a party in here. Wow, you guys are looking really bad. Jakarta would be really good to get, though. Really good. Should be able to do that and take you guys down and just put you guys there. There you go. And we should be over very soon. Good Friday agreement. Okay. Nice. 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 There you go. Keep these guys in place if you can. And circle and destroy. Special provisions. Today, Congress is convened to discuss the terms on our bill of a proposed Voting Rights Act. This bill is designed to provide general provisions for the prohibition of racial discrimination in local and state level voting. Despite fierce opposition from the far right MPP and muffled grumblings within the Democrats, we've managed to decide on a number of these provisions already. This includes forbidding the implementation of any sort of voting qualification, prerequisite, or any other act of interference against a person's right to vote on the basis of race, of on the basis of race color, or language. A debate has arisen on the matter of certain special provisions that may be added to the bill. These provisions include legally requiring all jurisdictions to provide election materials to voters in multiple languages, allowing federal oversight in any state or local level change to election laws, and the appointment of federal examiners to oversee voter registration functions to make sure the provisions are being implemented. The debate has grown fierce with the far-right MPP and some Democrats arguing that these provisions amount to federal tyranny, while the center MPP insists that they are absolutely necessary to protect the voting rights of America's most vulnerable. Many within the Republicans, meanwhile, argue that a compromise would be best, allowing some special provisions in return for some conservative amendments. How strong these provisions are? If they're implemented at will, will need to be decided before we can take the bill to vote. Too many provisions and the Democrats are likely to complain, and too few and the Senate will not be happy. What course should we take? Full equality? Add all the provisions? Low democracy? The general provisions are fine. Let's not push further. Uh, I kind of want to go all the way. I don't want to lose political power, though. Well, I'll try that one. We'll try it. We'll try it. Why not? And the Voting Rights Act. Increase the status of civil rights. They can uh, finally turn out in full force to vote. Temporary support from other senators is cleared. More decisions related to our Great Society program are now available. Is there anything that will increase the support here at all? Healthcare for our nation? We look a little better. Ooh, I don't want to lose consumer political power. The Voting Rights Act. We can probably go ahead and try that. We'll probably do okay. Probably. We're still campaigning, of course, which is fine. The front lines of their domestic situation is fine. And political landscape. We're ready for anything, which is pretty nice. Cool. Head on in there for now, even though you're probably a lot of guys. It's fine, whatever. Fighting in Indonesia. Not fun. Well, it's fun, but it's just like, I would hate to be fighting down here. I would, I would really hate to be fighting. Of course, then again, you'd probably hate fighting anywhere, but a position is secured. We got it, my friends. If you like your brothers, please go right ahead, but the jungle finally cools. Nice. We'll go slightly more unified, and we still have more cities. Oh, look at this. I'm going to make John Glenn a little happy here. 
Very good. And it's already 66. Very nice, my friends. So the reason I played off screen, like to get to this point, you know, where we started earlier in this episode, is just because uh I don't know. I like I said earlier, I think I, I think I said earlier. Like I played as Nixon like two times already. We already, we already know what's gonna happen, so. And to get LBJ, you need to have uh Oh my god, it's already filled up. Um Pass the Civil Rights Act. You have to pass pass the Civil Rights Act to begin with, so. Good, good, good. What's good to hear? Good RD campaign, good to hear. Deep South is still mixed. Let's see. Upper South. Just the entire South is a complete mix, so. Actually, how is Italy looking? Oh, crap. They're... Yeah, we're probably going to lose Italy to Japan. Um... Yeah, that's not good. Very good campaign in England. New England. All right. Yeah, there's no point doing that one. All right. Increase both of our influence. You can try that one, I guess. Sure, why not? Cool. And we can do that one because we can. Cut. Nice. Oh, nice. Very good. Very good. Keep spending so we get more political power. Ooh, we'll get one more point for the next issue. The popularity decreases a little bit. No, 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 we don't do that one then. Voting Rights Act and a beacon of darkness once more under the breach. Cool. Business and public facilities within the South will follow our new laws. I don't care how much they will cry and scream of federal oppression. They will not prevent blacks and other minorities from being able to access businesses for needed purchases and public facilities for needed assistance in their daily lives. I will personally send federal observers and, if necessary, the National Guard to enforce the law if I have no choice. Time to use a bully puppet on these states. Alright, so let's see what we can do here. Here, intelligence operations. Let's hurt the far right. If this really does anything, so... Alright, so let's do the Deep South, maybe. I doubt it'll do very much, but that's okay. Cleanups. We're weak on civil rights for now. Sweet talk to Democrats. Democrats will grow more, grow more prominent. We probably won't do that one. Democratic discomfort. President Lyndon Johnson walked with a small cohort of Secret Service beneath the Great Dome of the Capitol. As the Senate was not currently in session, fewer people than usual stood in the rotunda, but one appeared to be approaching Johnson rather quickly. Governor Ross Barnett, Johnson said, recognized the man. What a pleasant surprise. I was just going to meet with Rockefeller. Care to join me? Barnett did not appear to be in an, an, an amiable mood. No, Mr. President, he said curtly. I came here to say I was disappointed with your civil rights bill. You voted for them, though, yes? Yes, but they went far beyond the scope of what we agreed to. You play too fast and too loose with the Democrats' loyalty. We won't be so likely to give in next time. Johnson smiled, taking a step forward and placing his hands upon Barnett's shoulder. Congressman, I only did what I thought was morally right and was the best for the country. We're all one party, aren't we? Uh, let me tell you something, he said, his smile turning sour. If you ever threaten the integrity of the RD party again, I'll ru ruin your, run your career into the ground. Is that understood? Barnett nodded begrudgingly. Excellent, said Johnson, as long as we're all in agreement, right? Run along. <laughs> oh, Jumbo. Oh, look at that. Is that Burgundian system? The Mool Bar... Wow. Japan wants issue, of course. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to get Italy, which is really dumb. I don't know why Italy even wants to join the co-prosperity sphere. Like, that's insane. That's really insane. Getting the black vote, though. The RDs have accomplished one of the most monumental feats in social American history with the passing of the Voting Rights Act. Not only are the African Americans unimpeded on their way to vote, but now they're actively flocking to the polls, greatly increasing the ter voter turnout. The surge of African American votes is spread throughout the South, not only in the major cities of Birmingham, Atlanta, or Houston, but also in the smaller cities of Little Rock, Jacksonville, and Biloxi. The population was even getting ground in the poor rural areas of central Alabama on the, on the outskirts of the huge Georgia cities, but LBJ was hard at work today. It was inevitable that with proper representation, African Americans would go to the polls in huge numbers to show support for the party of their choosing. If Johnson could garner the African American vote, it's possible that the Artists could become the dominant party in the South, displacing the NPP menace. This vote will make up for all the Dixocrats that quickly deserted the party once the act was passed. The time was of the essence for uh, president, as it began to dial up activists, church leaders, professors all throughout the Deep South, starting with Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia. The we need the African Americans on our side. They're becoming more and more politically relevant. Should we succeed with the Great Society program, we might be able to include some of them in our electoral coalition. Cool. My goal is maybe just keep Italy then uh, independent. Because, you know, I don't like this one. I don't like that you have to do everything at one time. Like, do the Indonesian War as well as do Battle for Italy as you're doing the Great you know, Society thing. But, I don't know. It is what it is, I guess. Cool. And... We're done with this? Oh, that was fast. Finish it all up by 66. We got about a little more than a week. 
We're weak, 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 weak. A moment to reflect. No, we don't need to reflect. Progressives, uh, decrease among conservatives. Blood on the asphalt. Oh, boy. Well, in at least half a dozen cities across the nation, most notably Birmingham, New York, and L.A., African-American communities are in chaos. Their inhabitants taking to the streets to protest of passing of President Lyndon Johnson's landmark civil rights bill. The bill, which saw a fierce vote in the Senate between the progressives and the far-right and the Republicans, has widely been criticized by the former for its lack of debt protections for African-Americans and their disadvantaged communities. It now appears that many African Americans share that sentiment, as tens of thousands began demonstrating earlier this morning, calling the president a traitor, among other names, in many cities, however, notably L.A. and Birmingham. State governors sent in police and National Guard elements to disperse the protesters. The thing became violent quickly, however, with the prote protesters using improvised weapons to fight back, as well as makeshift shields made from hubcaps and trash can covers to block the fire hoses the police attempted to disperse them with. By the end of the day, hundreds of shops, cars, and public buildings have been vandalized or burned. Fighting appears to have been worse in Birmingham, where it appears that the local chapter of the KKK involved themselves when the demonstrations have become violent. The Klansmen, formed a temporary alliance with the police chief in charge of the operation, soon came down upon the protesters with clubs and other weapons. Now, with most of the Birmingham riots concluded, at least 19, uh, 20, 12 of them African American are confirmed dead. What a gosh darn mess. The South Ablaze. Over the past few days, in a dramatic but unsurprising series of events, the South and its far-right MPP population have descended into what can be kindly called utter chaos. Dozens of protests have been organized all across the former Confederacy in cities such as Atlanta, Montgomery, New Orleans, and Savannah. All this anger can be attributed to two men, in particular Senator Strom Thurmond and Alabama Governor George Wallace. These two individuals have riled up the white population against President Lyndon Johnson following recent announcement that his great society reforms would include comprehensive civil rights legislation. The Deep South having long been strong followers of the far-right MPP, and to a lesser extent the more conservative elements of the Democrats. As such, they have always had a reputation for acts of defiance against civil rights legislation, but nothing quite to this, to this extent. As of right now, it's unknown known why Strom Thurmond and George Wallace have promoted such extreme protests. And only time will tell if it has any true impact on the president's decisions. The president himself, despite the furious southern protestations, has declared that a great society includes equality for all individuals, regardless of race, color, or creed. He has dismissed the protest as nothing more than the far right wishing it had true influence. It would appear that the stubborn Republican president may will hold his ground against southern rage, but Congress may not. The South, angry over civil rights, typical. Our moment to reflect. Eh. I don't know. Uh, it's like, darn if we do, darn if we do well. So we have high unity, which is pretty good. Uh, threadbare safety net, which is her, actually hurts our political power, which is not good. Uh, destructive race riots? Well, I guess we gotta keep going down this way. Reshuffle police forces. State and local police forces within the various troublemaking states in the South will make sure that federal and newer state laws are enforced. The past enforced ignorance of the law as well as encouragement of the police brutality against Afro-Americans from our local and state police is outright criminal. This oppression will be dismantled. I will personally send federal investigators to have police departments either change their act themselves or force the states to fire mass amounts of disobedient officers who remain brutal towards Afro-Americans and refuse to enforce a law when it does not suit the race of Southerner. The bully pulpit must continually be used in enforcement one way or another. Bo Albright stepped out of his car the balmy air of another Sunday Alabama morning warming his skin. He walked along the sidewalk to the entrance of his pride and joy, Albright Deli and Butcher. Some people might think running a butcher store to be a poor career, but Bo had built his this store with his bare hands and was exceedingly proud. He unlocked the door, stepped inside, and began his work to, of breaking down a fresh hog he had received yesterday. Not long after he finished splitting the pig into its constituent parts, a man in a suit stepped through the door, flanked by the local sheriff, James Green. The suited man introduced himself as David Smith, an attorney for the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. The federal man was definitely an out-of-towner from his Yankee accent, Mr. Bo Albright. He began, I'm here to inform you that your business is in violation of the new federal civil rights mandates. You must remove your whites-only sign. Bo stood there, as if not comprehending the man's words. He looked at Sheriff Green, who shrugged. I built this place with my own two hands, said. Don't I got a right to choose who I let into my store? Them Negroes is a dirty folk. If I start letting them in, I'll lose all my good customers. If you don't start letting them in, said the Yankee, I have the authority to pursue legal action against you, potentially leading to the condemnation of your property. Take down your sign. With that, the Yankee turned on a heel and left the dumpy little butcher shop. Bo looked at the Sheriff Green. You can't let that carpet bag and son of a gun do this to me, he said. This is a violation of my rights. Sheriff Green sighed. If you're really angry, call the governor's office. I hear he's already given the Yanks in Washington an earful. We'll get through this, don't worry. I'll doubt that this attorney's going to show up again. I won't let him if you keep the sign up. The feds are trying to enforce civil rights. And what else do we have down here? So we have a lot more stuff here. Increased pressure on southern businesses. Improved civil rights in the country. The MPP will luckily benefit, but poverty will get better. At this point, I'm giving up on Italy. Italy is just... It's not worth doing anything for them right now, so... I like doing the environment stuff. That sounds kind of nice, actually. But I want to get better poverty. Ooh. Ooh. Hmm. Maybe doing civil rights first off, you know, before when we have Senate elections. Maybe not a great idea. But it is what it is. Um, I think my, my best goal is just... My main goal is just to prevent Japan from doing too well, so... Let's do that one. We need more political power. But 
where we will end this episode after we read about the Beacon in Darkness. A country should be a beacon of light for more people that want freedom from the boots of fascism and Nazism. The rejected individuals who often end up enslaved or killed must be saved. We should be loosening restrictions within our current immigration system to make it easier for immigrants to enter the country and work hard to become American citizens. We should be careful through, though, and how we implement it to make sure the process doesn't become chaotic and possibly harm country. Opening the floodgates might also help so many people, but it also might allow Nazi spies to easily enter, on the other hand. If we remain too restrictive, we alienate more people still. Let's make sure we pick the right solution. So, and we're going to keep going down this way pretty quickly. I want to get civil rights done, which will probably hurt us if for the next term or trying to get reelected. But regardless, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another episode. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.